Uh, I was invited to speak at an Amnesty International conference a couple of months ago. It was about um, youth participation. There's a few other organizations there. It was a panel presentation. So there are organizations like GetUp, uh, National Student Union, Street University. After listening to some of the questions that I was being asked and some of the things that the other panelists were talking about, though, it occurred to me that we weren't actually talking about youth participation. We were talking about advocacy. That's a problem because I'm not an advocate. So I sat there really quietly trying not to answer too many questions until it got to the point where I felt like I just had to say something to someone. So I wrestled the mic off my co-panelist and uh, blurted out, I've got to tell you guys, I'm not an advocate. Stunned silence. Someone on the panel goes, yes, you are. And someone else down the back yelled out, why don't you think you are? Now, rather than answer her question because I didn't actually have an answer, uh, I decided to pretend like she'd asked me something different, which was, what does an advocate do? At which point, my brain started throwing up images of people protesting, signing petitions, chaining themselves to trees, and giving flowers to police, because that is what an advocate does, right? That's very, very wrong. That is an activist, and I was getting my A words confused. And I can promise you, <laughs> my linguistic hiccup was not well received by the audience at all. And so I left that event and went back. Later on, I was thinking about, well, what does an advocate do? And I realized, actually, I am an advocate. So what then does an advocate do? They communicate. The provision of knowledge, information, and ideas is one of the most important parts of effective advocacy. Top-down change, driven solely by the government, has a really high likelihood for failure if it's not supported by the average people. What works is when individuals take up the cause, understand its purpose, and then share that information with others. So what then is something that we advocate about well or communicate about well? Physical health. The average person knows a lot about physical health. We know what the common symptoms of a cold are, we know that there are different types of fitness. Most people understand what constitutes a good diet, and many know what it means to maintain fitness. In fact, in Australia, one in three people will exercise at least twice per week. Of those that exercise at least once per month, their main reason for doing so was health and fitness. So we know that we do physical activity a lot, but we also talk about it a lot. Hey, Matt, you're looking uncharacteristically fantastic today. Gee, thanks, I'm on the something or other diet, four eggplants, 27 cups of water every day. Feel a little blacked up and bloated, but otherwise pretty good. <laughs> and your reaction to that conversation is probably something a bit like, that's a little bit weird, but I'm okay talking to you about your digestive issues, and you move on. This idea of talking about physical health is really common. These kinds of conversations are not that weird. Yet when we think about it, this idea of talking about physical health, it's a really widespread concept. My point is that there is an openness to communicating about physical health. What that means is that you're happy to talk to someone about a diet you're on. You're happy to talk to them about how you structure your gym program. This creates a shared knowledge within the community. We know what constitutes physical health because we talk to our friends about it. We know how to look after and maintain it. It's constantly communicated about, it's constantly advocated for. But if this is something we do really well, something we do very poorly is the other part of our existence, mental health. I've done dozens and dozens of presentations around Australia, and I can tell you, after speaking to young people, old people, business folk, executives, anyone that'll stand still and listen for a few minutes, that the level of shared knowledge in the community is really low. And this is a really big problem. In Australia, one in four young Australians will suffer from a mental illness. That's 671,100 young Australians who are experiencing a mental health difficulty. To give you another perspective, that is the capacity of the GABA nearly 16 times over. One of the things that people refer to as being a major issue with mental illness is that it's heavily stigmatized. Well, what does that mean? It means that people don't want to talk about it. But what does that mean? Hey, Matt, you're looking uncharacteristically fantastic today. Gee, thanks. I've been working really hard on my negative thinking, particularly some of my issues around feeling lonely. <laughs> That's uncomfortable. If, like most Australians, you would probably find that to be a really cringeworthy conversation. The intimacy, the information embedded in that is enough to make you want to run away and hide, or at the very least, cut that conversation off at the knees. Yet we're happy to talk to people about being backed up and bloated. What's the difference here? <laughs> the intimacy of the information doesn't change. It's just about the part of you that's, that's causing it. So the problem is really big. But imagine then that you're experiencing mental health difficulty. You're feeling completely overwhelmed, like you might be going crazy, and yet you don't have anyone to talk to about it. 
This idea of not talking about it is a major problem in Australia. Of the 16 gabbers full of young people with a mental illness, only three and a half of those will go and access professional help. That means that 77% of young people in Australia who are sick don't feel comfortable talking to someone about it. And so the question becomes, if there's such a big problem, why aren't young people doing anything about it? Why aren't they getting help? A better question to ask you then, how do you deal with stress? What are situations that are likely to make you feel miserable? What do you do in situations when you feel like your relationships are beginning to overwhelm you? Like most Australians, you've probably never given it much thought, let alone discuss it until the situation has presented itself. And even then, you're scrambling for a way to cope and to see what services are available for you. So I go back to the original question, what does an advocate do? Will they communicate? Except people don't want to communicate about mental illness. So I want to prese present to you a new idea for thinking about advocacy, a new way for communicating. I'm going to call it Advocacy 2.0. Like Web 2.0, Advocacy 2.0 is based on two really simple ideas. It's learning, understanding, and experiencing your time in the world, and then sharing that with others. Web 2.0 has created a community where previously static information sharing was a status quo. It's my experience of traditional advocacy is it's very much like the traditional web. You give me information, it's based in the public sphere, but you're not at all interested in what my response is. Advocacy 2.0, though, is about reciprocal learning. I experience something in my life, and I share that with you for you to learn and experience, and then share with others in your life. Advocacy 2.0 is all about communication at its most simple level. This isn't a social movement. It's not a viral phenomenon. This is about young people having conversations and looking after their own mental health and well-being, as well as that of their friends. It's not about preventing illness. It's actually about promoting your own health but also the health of others, because as we begin to open up and have these discussions, what begins to happen is that we create that shared knowledge like what exists with, with physical health. That means that you have access to resources, you know tricks and tips that work for other people that you can apply in your own life. So my challenge to you then is to be the friend that's happy, open to having that conversation, but understand that it's gonna be a trick and a challenge to convince your friends to do likewise. Learn how you work in your own world, what tricks and tips work for you, and then take that the next step and share that information with other people. The theme for today is to be the change, but I want to take that a step further and to suggest to you that you already are the change. Advocacy 2.0 is all about learning and sharing, so go learn and share.